let's talk about the DAX, which has been the most awaited one in our tutorial series. What does DAX stands for? It is an abbreviation of data analysis expressions. DAX, preci precisely DAX is something which you can consider as a library of functions or it's it's something which provides you a wide variety of the functions which you can utilize in your power bi project to create different sort of calculations to perform different sort of calculation you can create uh, using dax function you can create different sort of columns and majors now if you're thinking what is column and majors don't get confused we are going to cover it in the upcoming videos for now let's understand dax is something which is a set of functions which you can utilize to create to, uh, to perform different kind of calculation this is a very very important feature of power bi but at the same time it is equally simple and interesting to learn so don't get uh, you know don't get scared that this is something which is very very scientific if you're someone who has worked in excel or in any of the coding language this is going to be absolutely simple or nothing for you but if you're someone who has not worked even in excel this is still going to be very very simple for you to understand okay now let's have a look at the definition of uh, Microsoft Office what it says about the DAX. It simply says DAX is a collection of functions, operators and constants that can be used in the formula or expression to calculate and return one or more values etc etc etc. Maybe you can go through them all and you can study about it. Okay. The functions which we can use into the DAX, which we use in DAX calculations are something like mean, max, average, sum, count, data, deep. These are the very basic ones. As we progress further, we will learn other, other, other functions as well. Okay. So before we progress further with the DAX, uh, DAX functions or formulas, there are two things which we need to understand in advance. A little bit of data modeling and second is columns and measures. What are the columns and measures? So let's start with data modeling. So, for example, what I have done is here I have three Excel files. First one, which you see is quantity. Second one, which you see is price. Third one, you see is margin percentage. Right. And what I have done is I have imported quantity and price into my Power BI project. Now, over here, what I want to have is I want to create a matrix which shows me the total price total price for each of the products. So for example, here I have the product line and uh, I want to see the total price, total sales amount, let's say total sales amount for each of the product line. So for that, what I need to do is here I have this thing. Okay. These are the two tables which I have imported and I, I, I just hope that you are pretty much aware about how to import the tables. If not, check out the initial video in this series. It is very, very simple. And if you want to still if you want to do it right away so here is the excel workbook option you can use this to import that okay now let's come uh, let's get back to this so here is the matrix which i'm going to create and the product line is this is what i have okay now what i require is the total sales amount for electronics and accessories fashion and accessories food and beverages etc but for that what i require is quantity is something which i have in quantity table and price is something which i have in price table and total sales i will get if i multiply this and this then can i do that so let's say i can i am doing it quantity so i got the quantity over here if i do unit price also what i see is it is simply giving the sum of entire unit price and repeating it for each of the product which is not right that that's mathematically incorrect okay now le uh, let's see how can we solve this so for that what we need to go in what we need to do is go into the model view and over here let's see these are the two tables now what we need to do is in data modeling in data modeling what we basically do is we create the architecture of all of our data sources right and we establish a flow or relationship or we establish the association of the tables which uh gives the result that we can you know utilize different information from different columns and we can fetch the useful insights right so precisely that is what we can understand as the uh, what data modeling is because i don't want to get into more detail so over here now you see you have two tables quantity and price now what i need to do is we need to link both of these two tables so if you have worked in excel you must have used VLOOKUP, right? If you have worked in SQL or in any other coding pro, uh, coding 
programs right uh, for data analysis you must have used merging or joining that's exactly what we need to do over here so for that purpose we require one common column and over here what we have the common column is invoice id in quantity column oh sorry quantity table and invoice number in price table okay so what i I'll, I'll do is i'll take the invoice id and i'll drop it on invoice number and this is going to give me a relation which is one to one like you can notice over here one to one what does one to one means means in quantity table also we have unique invoice id and in price table also we have unique invoice id means there is just one entry for one invoice id so this is why it is one to one right so i'll keep this definition to this point only further i don't want to get into more detail and confuse you right now let's get back to the data view over here in this quantity table right what i require is one column which multiplies this unit price and quantity for that i will create a new column and over here i will simply name it as total price total let's call it total price and over here what i'm going to do is i will simply say total price and from quantity table what i require is which means from the same table into into price tables from from price tables i can pull directly it from price table but that's not how it's going to work because we have to make it uh, uh, related right so we need to use one function which is called related and then you see it automatically starts suggesting the second table which is price and from the price table i need to pull unit price so i'll simply click this and close the bracket this is it and now we are going to have here one column which gives us the total price now i simply need to get into this and from total price i need to take it and drop it over here now here is what we got now you see we have we got the total price for each of the uh, product line now let's take another example so for example i'm quickly going to pull in the margin percentage over here and i'm going to create another column right into it now what you will see over here is as soon as i import this one it will automatically establish the relation let me just check this and load it is just taking a few moment to load the records all right so it is loaded now let's go to the data model view when what do you see this magic this is the table which we just imported and what you see is it has automatically created a relation with the master table why because both of these two table had same column name common column had same name okay so be very very careful if you have a common column name make sure that both of those two column have same value okay so that will be helpful for you otherwise you would require to perform some sort of cleaning etc okay now let's get back to the data view again and create another column which will say margin right so let's just create margin column uh, it's a little bit slow so let's bear with it i'm going to say margin and margin is nothing but you know total price so total price which i need to take is from quantity table we created another column right into related and from the margin column i need to take margin percentage and divide by 100 so margin percentage was just given as 4.1 etc so i need to divide it by 100 so that that's that then only i will get the actual uh, value right so now we got the margin uh, margin amount also calculated let's get back over here and over here what i need to just do is where is margin this is the one and let's just drag and drop it over here so here is what we got margin per margin amount all right so this is what i wanted to show you in the modeling part and uh, in the beginning of the tax don't get I, I just hope that it was very very simple right and don't get afraid of if you if you get any kind of doubt just put that into the comment section i'll definitely help you out wish you very all the best and happy learning.